Welcome to the course on financial derivatives. The term derivatives might sound very fancy, new and complex. But the truth is, it is just a risk management tool that's been in existence since many, many years. In fact, the earliest evidence revealed that farmers used derivative contracts way back in 17th century to protect themselves against the decline in crop prices. So in this session, we will be discussing about the very basics of derivative contracts that includes the meaning of derivatives and various derivative products. So let's get started. So the basic purpose of derivatives is to mitigate or transfer the risk from future uncertainty of prices. So management of risk through derivatives is commonly referred to as hedging. So the various commonly used derivative products include forwards, futures and options. So let's begin with a forward contract. Let me give you an example. We all know that tomato prices are highly volatile in the market. Sometimes it sells at rupees 10 or 20 and sometimes even at rupees 120 per kg. But if you had noticed, the price of tomato ketchups in the market is not as volatile as that of tomatoes. So how do you think the company managed to retain a stable selling price for the ketchups despite the price of tomatoes being highly volatile? Probably, the company would have entered into a forward agreement with a trader. So a forward is an agreement between two parties to engage in a transaction at a later date with the price set in advance. So the later date is referred to as the expiry date and the pre-decided price is referred to as the forward price. So let us say, currently tomatoes are selling at rupees 30 per kg in the market. Assume that the company will require 10,000 kgs of tomatoes 3 months from now. So it is concerned about a potential increase in the price of tomatoes. Thus, it enters into a forward contract with a trader to buy 10,000 kgs of tomatoes at rupees 40 per kg 3 months from now. So here the forward price is rupees 40 per kg. So now let's consider three different scenarios. Scenario 1 where the spot price is greater than the forward price. So if the spot price of tomatoes on the date of expiry that is the maturity date is rupees 70 per kg. Let's calculate the profit or loss incurred by both the parties involved in the forward contract. So in this case, the spot price of tomatoes in the market on the date of expiry is much higher than the agreed price. Though the tomatoes are selling at rupees 70 in the market, the trader is supposed to sell 10,000 kgs of tomatoes at rupees 40 to the ketchup company as per the forward agreement. Therefore, in this transaction, the buyer that is the ketchup company makes a profit of rupees 3 lakhs and the trader loses the same amount. Now, we very well know that in this forward agreement, there is 3 months time for expiry. What if by the end of the first month, the trader senses that the market might not work in his favour and wants to pull out of the contract midway? He can do so, provided he could find someone else in the place, in his place to continue the transaction. But finding that someone is going to be a Herculean task. Thus, it is very evident that the forward contract is subject to liquidity risk. So it is not easy to get out of the contract midway. Now, let's consider the second scenario. What if the spot price on the expiry, on the date of expiry, that is on the date of maturity, is rupees 20 per kg? So in this case, the spot price of tomatoes is lesser than the agreed price. And therefore, the seller in the transaction gets benefited. Though the tomatoes are selling at rupees 20 in the market, the trader will be able to sell 10,000 kgs of tomatoes at rupees 40 per kg to the ketchup company as per the forward agreement. Thus, the trader earns a profit of rupees 2 lakhs, and the same is a loss for the buyer that is a ketchup company. Now, what if the company refuses to fulfill its obligation? The trader is bound to suffer, isn't it? Remember, a forward contract is just a private agreement and therefore it is subject to counterparty risk or default risk. So there is no mediator to ensure that both the parties fulfill their obligations arising out of the contract. Now, 
let's take the third scenario where the spot price and maturity is rupees 40 per kg which is same as that of the agreed price so in this case there is no profit no loss for both the parties involved in the contract so always remember in a forward contract the buyer of the underlying asset in our case it's tomatoes is always bullish about the market he or she expects a price to go up and similarly the seller of the underlying asset is always bearish about the market moment and he or she expects the price to fall so in a nutshell it is clear that forward contracts are subject to default risk and liquidity risk so in order to overcome this risk the parties can enter into a future contract instead of a forward agreement unlike a forward contract a future contract is not a private transaction but it gets traded on a recognized commodity exchange in addition all the terms of the contract that is the expiry date transaction timing minimum transaction quantity etc are all set by the exchange and most importantly both the parties of the future contract are protected against the counterparty risk by an entity called as clearing corporation So the clearing corporation collects a certain percentage on the total transaction value as margin money from both the parties involved in the transaction and this margin money is adjusted daily to the market condition so if the market situation favors the buyer the difference amount is debited from the seller's margin money and the same is credited to the buyer's margin money similarly if the market situation favors the seller the difference amount is debited from the buyer's margin money and the same is credited to the seller's margin money so we shall discuss this concept in depth by solving numericals in the upcoming sessions and also the future contract entered through the exchange provides liquidity any time the parties involved in the transaction can either book their profits or losses and square off their positions midway so his or her position would be automatically replaced by another participant in the market so please keep in mind that the transaction is still continued by another person and it has not come to an end this would continue till the date of expiry and there is complete anonymity the parties never know who exactly is on the other side of the transaction now let's move on to options so option is also a derivative contract between two parties a buyer and a seller where one party gives to the other party the right but not the obligation to fulfill the contract so in return for granting the option premium is collected from the option buyer so in the previous example of future contracts both the parties in the transaction that is the buyer as well as the seller are obliged to fulfill the contract but if the parties in the transaction would want to fulfill the contract only if the situation favors them and not fulfill the contract if the situation is not favoring them then they should probably enter into an option contract instead of a future contract so there are two types of options a call and a put option a call option gives a right to the buyer of the underlying asset but the put option gives a right to the seller of the underlying asset so the underlying asset in our example are tomatoes So let's recall the previous example. So remember the call option gives a right to the buyer. Therefore the ketchup company who is a buyer has to buy a call option from the trader that would give the company the right but not the obligation to fulfill the contract. In return for granting the option premium is collected from the option buyer. Let us say the premium of rupees 3 per kg is paid by the buyer to the seller of the call option. Now here let us consider different scenarios in scenario 1 where the spot price is less than the strike price or the excise price so if the spot price on expiry is rupees 20 per kg of tomatoes and the agreed price that is the strike price is rupees 40 per kg let us calculate the profit or loss incurred by both the parties in the option contract so in this case the spot price of tomatoes in the market on the date of expiry is much lower than the agreed price that is the strike price so if the company fulfills a contract it will incur a loss of rupees 20 per kg into 10000 kg so total loss will be 2 lakh rupees because it has bought a call option and as the situation is not favoring the buyer as per the contract the company is not obliged to fulfill the contract so the maximum loss is the premium paid that is 3 rupees per kg into 10000 kg is 30000 rupees so 
the call option buyer's loss is limited to the premium paid and the profit for the seller of the call option is limited to the premium received. Now, let us consider the second scenario wherein the spot price is greater than strike price or the exercise price. Now, what if the spot price on expiry is rupees 70 per kg and the agreed price is rupees 40 per kg? This situation favors the buyer of the underlying asset. Therefore, the call option buyer, that is a ketchup manufacturing company, would demand the call seller, that is a trader, to fulfill the contract. Thus, the call buyer would enjoy a profit of rupees 27 per kg into 10,000 kgs will be 2,70,000 rupees. Now, the call seller would suffer a loss of the same amount. Now, you might wonder, how about if the trader, that is who is a seller of the underlying asset, would like to enjoy the option? Then he has to buy a put option because the put option gives a seller of the underlying asset the right but not the obligation to sell. So, here are a few points to remember. The call buyer always expects a price to rise. The call seller always expects a price not to rise. A put buyer always expects a price to fall. And a put seller expects a price not to fall. So, please note that there is a huge difference between thinking that the price will fall and the price will not go up. Both are not the same. So, profit of the call seller is limited to the premium received even if the price falls. Similarly, the profit of the put seller is limited to the premium received even if the price rises. So, that's all for this session. Hope you found this information useful. Thank you.